What is up guys, welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'm gonna be going over a couple things you can do to control the rhythm of the game, the rhythm of your opponent, and be able to disrupt that rhythm and take control of point play in a much easier and low pressure scenario in a much easier and low pressure way. That will make it way easier to repeat that skill and repeat that pattern so that you're able to dictate play on the court more often. And then from there, you should be able to win more points easier. I have a hitting partner with me named Mia. You guys have seen her in a couple of other videos, but these drills and these little exercises are gonna be upstairs mentally as well as how to actually hit the ball. So let's get into today's video. And before we get started guys, don't forget to like and subscribe. The channel is growing very fast and I'm super excited to help more and more people as the channel grows. But let's get back into the topic of rhythm. So when you're hitting with an opponent or a practice partner, it doesn't really matter. There's always a certain rhythm that gets established and you guys don't have to inherently be hitting at the same rhythm, but that will still create one. So let's say I'm hitting the ball harder and lower and my opponent is hitting the ball higher and heavier. That still creates a rhythm of fast and then a little slower and fast and then a little slower. There should always be some type of tempo that's been established between you and your opponent. And that is usually taken care of during the warm up when you're hitting from the service line and then moving yourself back and then hitting from the baseline. So the first goal in order to be able to disrupt somebody's rhythm is to actually set a rhythm. Way, way too often people kind of just get balls over the net, especially at like the recreational level where they're kind of just content with the ball landing on the other side of the court. In order to establish this skill set, you have to make sure that you're trying to basically hit the same type of shot over and over again. So this warm up that I go through should be something that everybody is doing anyway. I'm just going to hit from the baseline. But what me and my partner are going to do is pick a speed, basically scale it from like one to 10 and say, we're just going to hit at the spot that we're both comfortable. So even in our service line warm up, keeping the ball at about a five, or four, we're still slowly establishing a rhythm. What that's also gonna allow me to do is time my split step. That's gonna allow me to find how extended my strokes are gonna need to be. Again, it doesn't matter if you're one-handed, two-handed, if you like to slice it, doesn't matter. The goal here is that every ball pretty much stays in that rhythm. So me and Mia have pretty much been hitting at like a level three. Oh, that's my fault. And see, as soon as I broke the rhythm, what happened? I just kind of gave you guys a preview of what the skill is going to be. It's going to be establishing a rhythm and then breaking the rhythm on purpose. So there's your hint of what we're going to be doing later. So taking it back to here, we move our level up to about a six. And again, just trying to maintain the rhythm of not changing. And if you use your ears, the ball is traveling at roughly the same speed. Even if we hit the ball higher or lower, the contact timing stays pretty much the same. Awesome. So once we've established that rhythm, here's how you control the point. You have one of two ways to do it. Break the rhythm randomly so that the person's not expecting it, which I've talked about, ooh, caught it, which I've talked about in other videos of the pattern disrupts. But the other thing that you can do is change the rhythm and control that new pace. So for example, let's say I'm hitting super hard and then all of a sudden I cut my speed in half. My opponents gotten used to being at a certain location on the court. They've gotten used to that way that their footwork timing has to be. And it actually becomes very uncomfortable to make quick random adjustments without really any type of leading information. So most people are good at changing the rhythm when they take control of the point. So let's say we're rallying from the baseline and then they step to like the blue line to attack. They've established that new rhythm on their own. But if I do that to them, they usually have trouble adjusting for it. You don't have to be inside the court to make that type of rhythm break. So a perfect example would be if I'm hitting with Mia and then for no real reason, I just throw a moon ball up She's not quite ready to make that adjustment unless she pushed me back into the court. Likewise, if I'm hitting with her 
and we're in that neutral setup, and then I just do that, she has minimal time to react and make those adjustments. It all depends on what you're most comfortable doing. And my favorite two ways to do this are what I'm gonna show you guys now. So if I'm playing somebody that hits the ball relatively low, which Mia usually does unless I put her in a defensive position, see how low those balls come over the net, my goal would be to get her to pick the ball up, which is naturally an uncomfortable shot since the rhythm she's established has been to keep the ball low. When you're warming up, you wanna make sure you pick up on what the person's natural shots are. That way you can actually figure out how to break them. So being that I know what her natural rhythm is, I have to get a ball low enough that forces her to actually have to pick the ball up like that. That's an unnatural feeling based on the rhythm that we've already established. Likewise, if I was to hit a ball like this, she could 100% make the shot, but the ball comes in in a way that isn't as comfortable. So that shot right there just invited me into this position, and I could do that in the middle of the rally. But if I give her the ball that's in the rhythm that we've already established, I get these type of shots consistently. Now, the thing that most people make the mistake of is they will then go, well, this person doesn't like high balls. I'm gonna hit high balls over and over again. But what does that do? That changes the rhythm of the game. And because you're changing the rhythm, you're allowing the other person to settle into a new rhythm. If you disrupt the pattern occasionally, then the person stays uncomfortable. You have to actually play within the rhythm that you've established in the warm up in the first few games, but then disrupt that pattern with a ball that you deem is uncomfortable for them. Another example would be most people are like, well, this person's backhand is not as good as their forehand. And what do they do in a match? They hit. 95% of the balls to the person's backhand, assuming that the backhand's gonna break down, but you're giving that person time and rhythm and repetition on that side, and eventually, that side grooves in more than the shot that you were trying to avoid. So that was a lot of talking to explain something that's very basic. You have to know how to disrupt a person's rhythm in order to control the rhythm. But as I said in the very beginning, establishing the rhythm is the most important part during your warm-up, during your first few games, and I always say during both of those because some people hit the ball different in warm-up than they do when the actual match or game starts. So you want to make sure that those rhythms are close or if they do change, you're aware of the fact that your rhythm in the set is different than the rhythm of the practice. But once you've figured out and established what the rhythm is, then you start to figure out two things. Thing number one is what's the shot that they like to hit. So again, if somebody likes to hit forehands up here, you give them a ball down low. If somebody likes to hit balls down low, you give them a ball that's high. Or if somebody likes forehands more than backhands, you figure out what's the favorite shots in the rhythm, and then you sparingly change the rhythm on purpose. Now the follow-up to changing the rhythm is establishing a new rhythm quickly. So what I mean is, let's say I'm hitting with Mia, as I was doing already, and I give her that ball that I know is going to force her to lift the ball up for me. She's already uncomfortable. And if I've been hitting at like a six, now after that rhythm change, I'm going to take that to like an eight. Because if I go back to the rhythm that I was already at, that allows her to resettle back in. So don't waste the rhythm change. The first thing you do is break the rhythm. Second thing you do, assess and establish a new rhythm for like the last shot or two. That keeps the person uncomfortable. You see this in the pro level all the time. And it's kind of like a copy and paste exercise of like hit a few balls, then attack a ball, and then step in, take the ball short, and then hit the winner. That's this exact thing, but there's more than one way to do it. Pros just tend to rely on the pace game more often. But drop shots are another example. You see people hitting the ball hard, 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 and then drop shot, and the person's never ready for it because they've gotten established in this area back here as this is where all the shots are going to be. So take this concept and apply it in the way that's most comfortable for you, where A, you establish your baseline rhythm of, I'm gonna be hitting at a six, and then you're like, I'm gonna change it to a two. That throws the person off. Now I'm gonna turn it all the way up to an eight, and that keeps the person on their back foot because they don't know what the next shot's going to be. But that's gonna wrap up today's video, guys. Remember, there are different ways to do this, but you still have to go in three stages. Sometimes you'll win the point before you get through all of them, but there are three separate stages. You have to establish that rhythm, you have to disrupt that rhythm, and then you have to change to a new rhythm that you intend to hold to. 
So most times when people are going through this, they'll do a good job of establishing the rhythm, but then when they disrupt the rhythm, they don't know what to do next. Make sure that you've kind of gotten that set, whatever is comfortable for you. And there's a bunch of different ways to do it. As I just showed you from the examples, you can go from hitting hard to hitting soft. You can go from hitting neutral to hitting high. There's different ways to work it out and make sure you do whatever works for you. But if you know anybody that'll benefit from this video, please send it off to them. Also, if you're new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe because the channel is growing and I'm super excited to help more and more people as the channel grows. But until next time, guys, I appreciate you guys spending some time with us and I'll catch you in the next one.